Also making news this Sunday, government maintains that shanty towns on the island of Abaco will be gone forever. In fact, days after Hurricane Dorian ravaged the island, work crews immediately got in to begin clearing the grounds that housed the former mud, pigeon pea, and sandbanks shanty towns. Well, on Friday, the Minister of Works led a delegation to view the progress of the cleanup at the mud and pigeon pea shanty town in Marsh Harbor. It's a condemnation of decades of neglect in our country that we've allowed to happen. Uh, now we're going to clean it up. And that promise to remove shanty towns from the island of Abaco is one government is keeping. So much so, Minister of Works, the Honorable Desmond Bannister, viewed the cleanup exercise underway by contractors at the Mud and Pigeon Pea shanty towns in central Marsh Harbor on Friday. He says he's pleased with the progress. You were saying that there are any number of open cesspits. Uh, the conditions that people lived in were unsanitary. If you look even around you, you'll see that illegal connections to water and sewage network, uh, which means that you had a lot of uh, non-revenue water. Uh, you had uh, a lot of theft of water. They have a whole area where they have piled up generators, to illegal generators that could have caused fires and other challenges. And all of that has to be sorted out by contractors. I think they're doing an outstanding job in doing that. They're fencing the area in. Several contractors are working on this project, including KW Paving Equipment and the Bahamas Striping Group of Companies and its subsidiary, Caribbean Pavement Solutions, who have already invested over $1.5 million and employing 72 men. 60 of them, officials say, are displaced residents of Abaco. We've had containers that floated um, probably more than a half mile from the harbor on the other side. Uh, that landed on top of homes, um, uh, boats, um, uh, cars, vehicles, trucks. I mean, the construction debris uh, alone, mangled with the green debris, uh, has just been an enormous, uh, an, an enormous task. Uh, one of the challenges that we've had is that there are many areas that are still swampish. And uh, so when the heavy equipment excavators and tractors payloaders are trying to come in, they begin to bog. And so uh, we had to right size some of the equipment. As you can see in the background, we've got some mini excavators and bobcats at work, and they're going into the more delicate areas. We came across uh, uh, some bodies uh, that would have been two weeks ago. Um, you, ne you never know what to expect. Uh, we still have um, piles of um, debris. And, you know, we only could, uh, you know, uh, project what could be under that rubble. We have to contact the authorities. We have to clear the area, which means that there, there will be work stoppage. Um, um, the police will have to come and, you know, do their, their review of the body and give the clearance for when we can return to that area. The ground itself is unstable. You know what I mean? Every, every 10 steps or 15 feet you go, you, you run into assessment. You know what I mean? So what that means, the machine can't do as much as the intense work. We have to have a heavy labor force, sorting out, picking out stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, with, with a heavier labor, um, it's more time consuming like that. We can't really be able to just rush and just bulldoze everything, just clean up everything. Like Realistically, uh, the contract was given out for, for three months. Um, I think we probably need probably additional, uh, uh, probably two months, additional two months to be able to get everything.